we're, what we're hearing here is that a lot this this material is going from uh, production, post-production visual effects. It's passing a lot of hands. It's being seen on a lot of different monitors. So this topic of maintaining a consistent look, consistent color is very important to everyone involved. And uh, one of the developments that's being worked on uh, is uh, ACES, which stands for um, Academy of, uh, the Academy Color Encoding Specification. Uh, it's being developed um, under the Motion Picture Academy. But um, Lori, maybe you'd like to start the discussion of that and explain you know, what it is, why it's important, and how you're starting to use it. Um, okay. <laughs> Stephen, jump in when I, when I say, yeah. The, 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 simple, um, the, the simple way to talk about it is that um, ACES is, a, is a, a way of taking your data from pre-production all the way through distribution in a way that's easily exchangeable between color correcting systems post houses. That's the, that's the big idea and ultimately to delivery. Um, so the big idea is let's have one workflow that every camera can put their data into and that every delivery can come out of, whether you're going to DCP or out to film, and that there's an easy way and a consistent way that we can do it. And for me as a producer, a, um, we know the cost of doing that, you know, but for the foibles that always come in in a film. Um, and it's uh, resolution agnostic to 4816K. Um, I've worked on the 4K ACES workflow in the camera assessment series that we did last year. And we, just to give you an example, we did a camera assessment series in 2009 with eight um, cameras, seven digital and one film camera. It took us about six weeks to get the data from all the cameras into um, a D, what were we in, DNX? Uh, right. Yeah, into, a, into the file format that we needed so that we could put it through a 2K workflow. The second one that we did three years later, we used the ACES workflow and we literally had it that night. And, um, and it, you know, sometimes minutes and sometimes an hour, a couple of the cameras changed a couple of their input device transforms to get into ACES. But the great thing about it is it's not a, by the way, it is not a done baked deal. They're in 0 0.2, I think, um, the Academy in terms of their uh, version of this system. But it's a great thing, I think, for us all to get behind in terms of a standard. It doesn't have to be ACES, but ACES for me right now seems to be the farthest along, <coughs> and it uses the visual effects standard of the um, OpenEXR box um, as the file format. So, it's a, so there's a tried and true interchange format that the VFX industry has been using a long time. So um, the Academy took that and built this system around it. And my big um, play for this is that if we, if we use it, you hear all the things that happen on every movie. We, we start refining it, we start fixing it, we start getting all the glitches out, we start making the cameras look better and better as they go through it, we make the output look better and better. And if we use it on more and more films, we will, we will iterate. It's like when you get a version you know, 1.0 of the iPhone or um, you know, whatever software. It gets better and better as people use it and we find out the issues. So Has it been used, Lori? Um, it has. Um, I've been told it's been used in about 100 production na productions now. Mm -hmm. um, the most recent one was, I think, uh, Oblivion. 